Welcome fish lovers to Sax Tanks, Crazy Aquarium Guy. Today's episode is 40 minutes long and it's back to basics in swim tails. And we got some tips. I'm gonna show you when I clean my FX6. We're gonna feed the turtles some razor clamps. And we got a bunch of other stuff in the video. I don't wanna have to throw the video away by telling you everything now. So please stay tuned and I think you will like it. Welcome again and enjoy the video, my dear fish lovers. Let's go. Fellow fish lovers, let's see what we got in the box today. I think I know what it is. I should know. I paid for it, right? But. It's hard to remember everything, especially if it comes from eBay. But this is not from eBay. Yes, I knew what it was. So you can think that I have a sponsorship since I've been talking so much about this food lately. You like Spectrum Ultra Red, but I think it's awesome. And this is the half mil pellet size. So this is for the trophies. They have three sizes. Yes, half a mil, one millimeter, and two millimeter. And I usually have two millimeter to the goldfish, but the trophies are gonna get half a mil. Great price on this side as well if you're Swedish and want to buy really good food for the best price. I mean, my local fish guy charged me twice what this side charged me for this one. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for my 10% viewers from Sweden. And of course, since I love Ultra Red and I didn't try anything else from them, I bought the Cichlid formula. I'm gonna feed this to the goldfish and change up, feed Ultra Red to <laughs> the trophies. I still have a, uh, Ultra Red left for the goldfish though, but. They're gonna get this stuff now. Till the next bit. The 75 gallon cube. It did come as a... The name of the cube, I mean, is Cube Extreme. I think it's actually 78 gallon. If you're gonna be correct, but... 75 gallon cube. And Balisnira Giant is the one that I keep in here. It's not looking perfect right now, and I'm gonna tell you why. And this works for all Balisneria. Although you want them to be green and completely dense and thick like this it won't be if you don't trim it because the lighting isn't gonna penetrate the water to keep the bottom of the plants super green so you want to trim them because they're gonna grow longer and longer and longer or taller and taller and taller and this tank is almost uh, three feet, uh, two feet and two thirds of a feet. So it's perfect for Balisneria. That's why I bought the giant from the beginning. But I only bought two, three, really small with three leaves. And this is two years later. So I started out with Cryptocorine and a bunch of other stuff. And as time went by, the Velisnera started spreading because I trimmed the top off. But what you don't want to do is what I did this time. See, I took the whole thing and trimmed everything like a hedge, like this. And you don't want to do that. Because every time you trim Velisnera like that, the top, the top ends, 
uh, it's gonna get stunted, or not stunted, but it's gonna stop growing. And for a while, a week maybe, maybe more, maybe less, depends on the environment and if you keep CO2 or not. I don't keep CO2 because I want my channel to inspire more people to keep plants with your fish and you don't have to have CO2 although all scientists that keep aquariums <laughs> have CO2 and that's because they understand more than me <laughs> how much the plants need that stuff But CO2 makes it more complicated. So I want to show people that you can keep a simply planted tank with a lot of green plants and beautiful fish without a ton of work. Because CO2, maybe that's work for one time and then you have it. But you need to exchange the CO2 and you need to buy new CO2 so it's more cost. and. Also, you need to trim the plants a lot more because CO2 makes them go crazy. It's like steroids for plants. So it takes more time, but it goes quicker in the beginning. So if everything is equal. It takes more time in the beginning, it takes more time from you at the end. But it's easier to be successful, of course. But <laughs> enough out of that. Um, don't do what I did, trim everything at once. I actually trimmed a third and it, I waited three days and trimmed a uh, third and so on and so on. And I shouldn't have done that because if everything stops growing at once, then you get some algae. So it's still looking pretty good but not as good. You see that leaf? in particular this leaf so you start getting that because it stops to grow because you cut the top of all the leaves so don't do that I mean this tank still, still looks super good and I wouldn't have done that if I didn't have like 50 plants to come back so strong against the black beard algae but this was still a big mistake that's why I'm announcing it because <laughs> doing it all at once did stop them all and did get me some black beard algae so that's the lesson here but I started to film this tank for another reason I moved my thread thin rainbows and my fork, fork tail or fukaka fukata something like that rainbows in here and some antlers from my 19 gallon in the bedroom so it's just blue shrimp in there now we can take a look at that tank later but we've seen enough of this tank but I love just the look of it still I would want to by like, I think I have 40 green neons and 20 cardinals. I would like to have 200. So the whole tank would look green, blue, green, blue, green, blue, all over. So that's why I'm starting to, I've actually taken out some plants in the front here. Because when I did that, they hang around here. So much plant in this tank. So much plants. So if I took out this one, this one, and three more here, and that one, they would definitely hang around here all the time. And if I get more, it would look super awesome. But 40 doesn't look enough. And I want green neons, I think. So that's for another video. But I'm kind of low on funds right now so <laughs> not gonna buy more aquarium stuff for a while so till the next cube guys
So, I'm draining the FX6 and I unscrewed this one and this has been running for 10 months and you can't tell anyone oh you have FX6 clean it every other month clean it one, one, once every 6 months because it depends on the load in the tank this is 10 months because I had a big cube aquarium in the way otherwise I probably waited 6 months I mean it's been with rainbows and then some barbs and corridoras, hundred of them, but I have another one on there. And a big hang on back filter as well. But with the turtles, for example, I have five FX6s by the way. Uh, with the turtles, I have to cl uh, clean it every other month. And it's still the most dirty one <laughs> each time. So it depends on your stocking. And once every third month, I clean the one with the yellow labs and the tiger bars I will keep one in there 138 gallon so once every third month and once every six months for the two FX6 on the rainbow tank and my fifth FX6 on the Fahaka tank I haven't cleaned it yet because I'm gonna clean that one when I get another one I'm gonna get number six soon I hope I think I'm gonna wish for it my birthday is coming up and I'm gonna turn 30 so when you turn 30 at least in Sweden you get extra good gifts from your family hopefully so I'm gonna wish for another FX6 and then I'm gonna run that for a month and then clean the FX6 for the Faka so I can clean all sponges I clean sponges in the sink tap water and don't do that if you're a beginner but I have three uh, kilos of ceramic media in here and those I don't clean I rinse them off in tank water but the sponges I clean in here that's why I like having two filters because then you can really clean the filters in the sink because the other one is running full with bacteria and when so think of it like this if you get two, two new ones I would wait three months, clean one of them, wait three months before I clean the other one. So the, the one that you just clean have enough bacteria in it before you clean the other one. So never clean them at the same time. Or never clean one of them and then wait two weeks and clean the other one. Because then your tank is probably cra gonna crash. Okay? And ask me anything in the comment section if it's getting confusing. So 10 months in here. Wait a minute. I drain it and now we're going to lift it up. I'm going to lift it to the sink and just rinse some small stuff and then show you again a closer look how it looks. How dirty it is. So we're going to take a look inside. Not too bad for 10 months, but it's always going to be some sand in there. So you want to turn it upside down and take your hose and rinse it out while it's upside down so you get all of this sand out because it's the sand that's gonna destroy the motor in the long run so not too bad in here but over here we got the real monster now we're gonna take a look at how dirty they are Okay, so I have each individual FX6 a little bit different than the other one, so I could try what works best. So in this one, I have the fine filter that Fluid sends with you on top, and then I made one of my own, a little bit more finely meshed, thick piece, and then underneath that. This is also sponges. Underneath that I have a kilo of ceramic media. Just put that away. Don't clean that. And in the bottom, the same thing. And it's better to go, since I have five, I've tested all ways you can do this. So it's better to go all the fine media in the bottom. 
because the water is coming from the bottom. It comes down on the sides and up from the bottom. So do it the other way around. But I wanted to try what, which way was the best because I have five. So of course you want to try so you can do the ultimate FX6. And it really does a big difference if you put in too much stuff or if you only put in fine filters. I mean, with the Faka tank it couldn't push because it was almost, not 10 feet, but <laughs> um, 5 feet up. More than 5 feet. 6 feet, 6.5 six feet up. So it couldn't push when I had the fine material in the middle. So with that one I only have ceramic in the middle all the way because I have to otherwise it would have uh, slow down too much and you don't want to see somebody clean sponges I can just show you so we know get an idea and the ones in the bottom are all, almost always the, the dirtiest of course so that that is what I do don't clean the ceramic clean this one under the tap and then wait two months before I clean the other one and it's perfect because I waited it was like yeah it was two months ago I cleaned the other one on this tank the other FX6 so this one yeah so when this is going in cleaned cleaned except the ceramic media we have another one that's been running with not clean ceramic media and the foam has been building up bacteria for two months. That's how I like to do it. Because look at this mess. If you have 5 FX6, 14 aquariums, I mean, I know I'm not supposed to run the, the sponges in tap water either, but come on man. I need to do that. Otherwise I don't have any time left. I can't have a channel, do a regular job <laughs> and clean my sponges in, tap, uh, in tank water when I have 5 FX6's and besides my 5 FX6's I have three other canister filters. And that is not all of my filters. I have a lot of hanging backs as well and sponges and inner filters. So you get the point. But now you get to see how it looks after 10 months. <laughs> I love this filter. This is the best canister filter I ever had. It's easy. It runs for a long time. It's easy to clean. Um, the one thing I hate about it is that it, it, it can't uh, pump and fill itself. You need to fill up the filter, the canister. It's not a big deal, but it would have been a lot easier to just put it on and <laughs> fills itself. It can work, you can just turn both faucets on at the same time and hopefully your canister is so much lower than the tank so it fills it. But I've tried that and when that doesn't work it takes a lot longer to do deal with these screws again if it doesn't work. So I'm just filling it up here in the kitchen with AquaSafe and then going with the whole thing heavy and ready to start so like I said FX6 with all canister filters really figure out how the water comes in and this is it comes in swirls down around the sides and then pushed or sucked up from the bottom so you want to keep this stuff in the bottom and then ceramic media on top of that and the pathetic amount they send with the FX6 is never enough so get more filter media yourself you can fill them with two and a half kilos more than you get from them so definitely buy more ceramic media and fill it with but with the FX6 fine mesh in the bottom then two chambers of ceramic and you're good to go hope you found that interesting to the next bit all filled up again and ready to go 
it takes me about 40 minutes, maybe 30, 30 to 40 minutes to unplug it, drain it, clean it thoroughly and fill it up again and attach it. So that's not too bad for a big canister filter. Especially since on this tank I only need to do them once every six months. So that's how I do with the Epic 6. Till the next swim tales. So my brother tells me I'm spoiling my fish. But I like spoiling my animals. These are racer clams. And both the common pleco and the turtles really loves them. I just buy them fresh in the net and freeze them alive raw. This, um, those, uh, the racer clams are not that hard and they are easy to open, so it's no problem for the turtles to eat this. And of course, they're not eating the shells. You can see on the bottom, leftover shells. But it's water change time today, and then I always feed them something really good before that. Some of them are floating. How many did I put in? Four. I can start with four. See what, see what they do with them. So if you're new to the channel, I have fa uh, five musk turtles. And I've tried to keep them with plants for a long time, but they destroy everything. It's time to change the water today. I change 90% every fifth day. And this is a uh, 100 gallon tank with 5 turtles and an FX6. And still, the FX6 smells really terrible. Even though I clean that FX6 a lot more than I clean any other FX6 I have. Turtles, as they defrost in the water, the turtles can smell meat and they love meat. These are musk turtles and they are carnivores. So they really need meat. I mean, you can still feed them a pellet. I also feed them pellets every day. This one is a really good one for juveniles. It's just perfect for musk turtles because the pellets are smaller. I looked up the ingredients in them and it's the same if you buy for grown-ups. That's really good and everything but you can really tell that they eat meat in the wild because when they get fish I usually gave them fish fillets. Uh, next time I'm gonna give them uh, octopus actually raw and now they get, get their racer clamps they're all hiding looking around one is on the intake of the FX6 they have a basking area that's completely dry I have a poultice plant growing to eat some nitrates and I have another basking area where I don't have a heat light but I still have a UVB light so they can dry up without sunbathing and here they can dry up real good and heat themselves and still some you can see some forks weird designer fork, forks that I got but they are perfect for attaching zucchini so the zucchini will sink they will also, uh, the turtles also eat zucchini but that's it's most mostly for the common pleco so I need to take those out but the common pleco ate half of a zucchini in three hours yesterday 
and the day before and then another half in like five hours so <laughs> they are really selfish about the shellfish no but they're really selfish see that guy he's terrified that one of his mates in the tank is gonna find out that I that he is carrying this razor clam <laughs> so instead of just eating they're so nervous that someone will take their food so they run around claiming it sooner or later in the tank they will stumble upon one of the other four and if that is if the <laughs> now it's fighting with the pleco over a piece it's okay they don't bite the pleco and the pleco can't hurt them obviously they try to decide who's the boss this never happens with regular food but That's how I know they really love this stuff when the pleco starts fighting with the turtles over the food. Just putting piece number five. There are still two right here in the front, but they haven't found them yet. I think it's a good natural way also to feed them something that lies around on the bottom and they can really smell stuff in the water, so they need to go around and look for it. So this is easily my worst escape in all my aquariums. But it still looks pretty good. Because I found that amazing Mopani driftwood piece that's super big. Without that one, this tank wouldn't have looked nice at all. And this is another Mopani driftwood piece that I used to keep with the discus that I threw in. And behind behind that one I have a pleco cave. And that's because I have four brisenols plecos in here, so I thought maybe they would want a small cave that turtle that the turtles can't get into. But what happens is that one turtle goes over there, sticks his head in and thinks it's hidden. <laughs> so it's so super cute when he does, does that. If he, if he gets scared, if I'm doing water change or if I'm moving the driftwood, he goes over there, sticks his head in, and thinks that I can't see him because it's he uh, because <laughs> his head is not showing. That's really cute. So not. Not so much action today. They need to defrost a little bit more before they smell. They are looking. I just can't wait for them to be older because it takes four, four years for uh, some of them to really mature. And that is when you can expect them to lay eggs. That's why I have that little pad of sand without the heat light. So if they want they can go up and dig, dig, dig down some eggs. And my turtles aren't old enough to lay eggs. Or because I only have them for like, I don't know, two and a half years now. But two of them... I rescued somebody saw my channel saw that I was building this hundred gallon um, turtle tank for my uh, then I had two so if I had five I would have gotten even bigger actually just to keep the water clearer easier but you see it's water change day today and it's crystal clear water so my turtles never smell but the filters smell when you clean them so I rather have it that way 90% every fifth day and 
no smell and clean clear water. And some people ask if they are carnivores doesn't they eat the fish? Absolutely they eat the fish if they can. And it happens fish can be falling asleep underneath that piece of um, cork bark and a turtles time it precisely right and gets him but usually they are way too slow to catch a fish that is swimming in and, and awake but some of the sword tails they have eaten because the sword tails are big enough so they don't they're not afraid of the turtles and that's a bad decision because the turtles love to eat all of them if they could there we sit. saw a little bristles found a razor clan oh. I'm gonna work on this tank now I just wanted to show you guys some when my turtles eat razor clams it's water change day, cleaning the glass and they always move the driftwood even this big one they are so strong turtles a lot stronger than you think they move all the driftwood around so I need to rearrange it every time every week when I do water changes So, till the next bit. So, we got a few new stuff. The best thing with eBay is that it takes a long time. That's also the worst thing. But in this case, it is because I'm decided to not buy anything more because I'm really need to get my finances in order. <laughs> uh, but this stuff I paid for uh, in the be in the middle of December because you need to pay ahead and then they'll arrive four to six weeks later because it's eBay and I live in Sweden so even though I don't have any money and shouldn't be buying things these are already paid for paid for so this is just fun so talk about that I want new things for the 75 gallon cube uh, and if I do that in the future one of these is pretty much the perfect amount to treat them twice once a little bit harder and another one two days later so I wanted one in case I get fish because I have fish in there and the best Thing you could do is to have them in a quarantine tank and all that but I'm gonna pour them in the tank immediately so I'm gonna treat the whole tank then. so that's that was why I bought that one but even so they are so expensive to me uh, I need to pay shipping for them and blah 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 but I can't get them in Sweden and I really love them so we turn to eBay this I've been waiting for a long time. So this I ordered before I got the Propius and it arrives now. So if you've been watching my channel, then you get the idea. Five weeks ago, six weeks ago. And this is GBL Spirulina Flakes. And these are the perfect food for the Tropius. You have a tropius over there. So this is the perfect food for them to just go, I don't know, fem to seven, five to seven times a day. Go get, go and get them a little nibble, a little nibble. Go in the, every time you go near the tank, a little nibble. So I wanted this one. I wanted this one first. I had like ten products from eBay. And this one took the longest, of course, because this was the one that I wanted the most. It took it, it took the the long, longest time for it to get here. 
I can talk to them. Tired. Didn't get much sleep last night. But you know how it is. This is interesting. This I actually don't know what it is. Oh, looks like a present. But it's tightly wrapped. So, I don't want to damage the bag. What is this stuff? Can't even remember buying this one. Oh, now I remember. Yeah. This is just, I'm going to show you. This is, well, the packing went very well. Could have just put this in an envelope. So this is and the tape up there too. Sinking carnivore pellets. So I just wanted to try them out. See if the shrimps like them, if the turtles like them. Some of my plecos are carnivore plecos. See if they like it. Otherwise the corridor is gonna love it. So I just wanted to try it out since I never tried it. And this was a lot cheaper here for me. A lot of Ikari in Sweden, but this one was absolutely cheaper buying this one. So that was the stuff for today. And I also got this the other day, but I forgot to unbox it. This stuff, I will keep this stuff at home at all times. This is working every time. And blue-green slime algae really looks bad and this work this works every time best product ever for algae removal so till the next bit guys so I really cleaned this tank picked out all the forks that were lying on the <laughs> gravel from feeding the pleco some zucchini and stuff and all the shells from the racer clamps and all the glass and everything and I took out all the driftwood and of course I'm gonna put it in all this awesome driftwood again but I have finally decided to give this guy away I mean it was so irresponsible of me to get a common pleco so, I'm actually surprised none of my subscribers has asked me, Zach, you know so ma much things about aquariums and fish, why do you keep common pleco? <laughs> they get huge. But now I found him a home. So I thought that that's what I've been waiting for. Uh, and that was the plan from the beginning, but I shouldn't have got him because now it's hard to say goodbye because uh, because I really like him but he's gonna live in a how much is it in gallon a 900 gallon tank so it's gonna have a much better home in the 900 gallon than in this 100 gallon with turtles hello we see you so I'm gonna get rid of this guy but it's a second reason why I'm doing that my brother once again wants to give away some fish he only has four aquariums but he is like me in that way when he has in, when he is in a uh, good mood he buys too much fish and then they grow up and he have to sell them to some people give them back to the store or give them to me and I'm not gonna address what I'm gonna get but because it's more fun that we can look at that when I put the fish in but it's gonna be something fun so bye bye Mr. Pleco I'm gonna miss you So that was all I had 
for today, fish lovers, but I have some information and I think it's a great way to support my channel because it's free and that is I have started with leaving links in the description for the stuff I use in the videos and the links are directly linked to Amazon and Amazon doesn't uh, put any more money on the things you buy but they give me a cut because I send you there so it's, it's totally free for you so if you want to buy something that I unbox or talk about in my video now you can go to this, this to, uh, I can't talk sorry now you can go to the description and buy it for yourself and support me I get a fraction of what they get of course but Amazon usually has the best prices so it's a win-win in my opinion and of course if you're not living in United States or England or think they have a German version also and or if you be, live in Sweden and don't want to pay the shipping because you can find that stuff here that's cool of course you're not gonna buy just to support me with the fracture of the money but still this is completely free and I know a lot of you guys who live in the United States and wants to support me but not enough to support me on Patreon you can really support me to, uh, and buy things like this instead so I'm gonna start doing that in the description from now on I'm gonna leave links to Amazon and Amazon charge you 12 bucks for a fish food and it would have been 12 bucks even though it wasn't my link so it's not the way it works they don't put anything on the price but I get something because I send you to Amazon so it's free for you only Amazon loses money and I get money and it's free for you and you support me get it? I, I knew about this but I didn't think it was so easy I mean it's not easy it's a lot of work to get the links in order on start the account and something but I thought Amazon would have have, have some limit or uh, that you have to pay them to be a member like that or something like that but no free to start doing that so I'm gonna do that from now on and please tell the fish fam that I'm doing that if, if uh, they don't watch this video but I'm gonna announce it a few times more so people will get it so sorry if you're listening right now and, and because you need to hear it a couple of more times in future videos but still it's I think it's a good thing and on another note I took in the common pleco today and the Shubunkin but I told you it, it was a comment pinned I pinned the comment in the goldfish video that I took out the Shubunkin even though I miss him all of the auto feeders are going on but I bought something really nice instead so we're gonna talk about that in the next video but thank you so much for spending your time at my channel and supporting me it means the world to me because I'm in for the long run in five years I want to do this full time so and this is a free way to support me so go to Amazon through my links and buy my stuff and I didn't announce it in the goldfish video but you can buy the same stuff in this description because I bought more of the same stuff uh, so yeah please do that and I know just why I say this at the end because the ones that care and really wants to help me they stay to the end and watch the whole video so I think it works like that maybe I do it in the beginning in another video so thank you so much fish lovers please like the video hope you like the video and don't forget to share it and see you in the next one bye bye